everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today I decided to make a granny square bag with wooden handles. And when I finished the bag, it turned out it can take 15 balls of yarn. So I was really pleased with it. And although I want to use it as my handbag, I am so happy that I could also use it as a project bag. It's really easy to make, really quick as well. So I hope you will be intrigued to make this as well and make it as colorful or as plain as you want to. I'm also looking at doing embellishments, but that will be for the next video. So to make the bag, you're going to need a crochet fabric of about 60 by 60 centimeters or 24 by 24 inches. Now, this fabric I created by doing a continuous granny square. So I've made a granny square and I've just kept going, changing color every round. I also made sure I've sewn in the ends and I have done 30 rounds. So on one side of my square, I have 30 clusters. So that's also counting the one from the corner. So one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. So I have 30 clusters. So that's what you will need. I used the Spring Garden yarn pack from our website. So do go to the link below this video and check it out. So then I went into my fabric stash and I found this fabric. I cut this a little bit bigger than my 60 by 60. So I cut it about 64 by 64 or um, 25 by 25 inches. And I do that because I always cut too big, but also I'm going to attach that to this with a seam allowance. So I'm going to fold this over and then attach it to my square. So I am now going to use my sewing machine to attach this onto my fabric here. So it's pinned all the way around. Now I'm going to sew it with my sewing machine. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you can of course just use, um, you know, sewing thread and a needle. So what else do you need to finish this bag now that we have prepared our bag portion? We're going to have to attach the handles and I'm choosing one particular colour. So here I've got Empire. Of course, it's the same type of yarn as I have been using. So I'll be using the same hook size. I have used a three and a half as I usually do for DK scissors and of course a darning needle. And then here I've got... Um, some stitch markers which we will need to just indicate a particular row so we don't uh you know start using the wrong row when we need to and then here i've got a set of handles for the bag um i bought these off amazon they're sort of wooden i particularly like these because yeah i like a good wooden handle and of course using something like this means if you crochet your handle it stretches this won't stretch so I will put a link uh, to these um, in the description box below the video so you can have a look at where I got these as well. So we are going to get started on reducing our sides. So we know we've got 90 stitches here. We have to reduce them quite considerably. So make your slip knot, insert your hook and to get started we are going to do a single crochet in the corner chain space. Then we do three single crochets, so one on top of the first three stitches of our side here. There we go. And then we are going to reduce we are going to do single crochets and we are going to place them in between the clusters. So we're reducing quite considerably. So here, one, then in between the next two clusters, one, in between the next two clusters, one single crochet in between the next two clusters and so on. Okay. And this is what you are going to do really on all four sides. Two of those sides will be identical to what I'm doing here. 
and two other sides will need a little bit more for adding the handles. So I'm going to get started with doing the two sides that are easier. Show you those first. And then I will show you the other two sides as well, of course. And I will show you how to attach the handle, of course. So try to make your stitches as small as you can. As you can see, they are quite elongated, but that's, you know, that's the best I can do for now. Just making sure you do your single crochets in between the clusters. And I am nearly at the end of the row, so I might as well just show you straight away. So we're going to end the row the same way as we started it. So we do a single crochet in between the clusters. Then we do three single crochets on top of the double crochets of that cluster. And then we will finish with a single crochet in that corner chain space. Now we're going to chain one and turn. And now we're going to place one single crochet on top of every stitch that we have done in the previous row. I'm just picking up the two strands of the V each time advancing to the next stitch. There we go. This is what it looks like. And of course, we are now going to do single crochets all the way to the end. So when you get to the end, you place your single crochets there we go. Voila. And that is it. So this is what we are doing on two of the sides. So if you look at your square, you've got here this reduction. And now you're going to do the same reduction on this side. Et voila. Here we go. So I've done two reductions on opposite sides. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to deal with these sides here. So we are going to get started by doing the same reduction on this side here. So let me do that. So there we go. So I have done this now on the third side. Now here is going to be the side for the handle. So we have to do more rows. So I'm now going to do another 10 rows of single crochets. But the first row, while I'm doing this next row here, I'm going to put a couple of stitch markers in it just so that I indicate which one is my first row because we will use that later on again as well. So here we go. So I'm going to just do a turning chain, turn and start doing single crochets again. So we're going to be making this part a little bit longer and we will need that for attaching our handle. So I'm just going to place a stitch marker onto this row just so that I know that this is that first row of my 10. Throughout this row I kept adding the stitch markers just so that it would be really clear which is this row that I am doing. We need it later on when we attach the handles. Okay, so I have done my 10 rows. I have tallied them up there. And I have added a few more stitch markers to that third row here. So that was the first of my 10 rows, just so that I clearly see which is that row. Okay, because this is the one that we're going to be using in a moment. So now I'm ready to start attaching my handle but it needs a little bit of organization. Okay, so we're going to do a chain, 
then what we are going to do is place the handle wrap the fabric around and attach down below and our yarn needs to come from the right place so we are going to have to take the ball of yarn and place it through the hat place that yeah you know do this <laughs> i don't know what we're doing actually so put the ball of yarn through your handle okay then hold it against your piece of fabric also bring your hook through and now See, this is a little bit awkward. Now, I've done 10 rows, and I think that's okay for the thickness of my handle. If you have thicker than this, you might need more rows, um, but it needs to be snug as well. So I think this is going to be snug. So now I'm going to go and find the first stitch of that row that we've indicated with the stitch markers. Here is a stitch marker. So this is the first sort of post in that row. And we need to have our yarn underneath this piece of fabric to be able to use it. So let's put that there. Okay. So we've done our little chain. I'm now going to go over to this location here bring through the yarn not get involved with the stitch marker and do a slip stitch just to get started okay it doesn't really matter what you do here just get it started so then we're going to go and find the first v on this piece of the fabric here then you go over to the other side you pick up the yarn the working yarn you bring it up and you pull it through the stitch and through the loop on your hook go into the next stitch here in between the next two stitches on the other side so on the other side of the stitch marker there let's get rid of the stitch marker so it's in the way now in between the next two stitches of that third row there bring it all through and through the loop on your hook into the next one and into the next one bringing up the yarn and through and through the loop on your hook so basically we are doing slip stitches by going into the stitch on this side then into the stitch on that row that we indicated with the stitch markers you wrap the yarn around your hook on the other side you bring it up you go through the stitch and through the loop on your hook and this is how you're going to go all the way until of course the end of your fabric here and this is how you are going to be attaching your handle so I will see you at the end of the row here. Okay, so I have done my row of slip stitches, gone all the way around my handle like this, using up all my stitches from the panel that we made from the 10 rows. And look at this. So I think this is a lovely way in which to adhere the handle to our bag and of course yes this has to be done on the other side as well so we have done this side we're now going to do this side And voila, there is the second handle. So I am really pleased with how this has gone. Now, of course, I'm going to have to sew in the ends. And the reason why I want to show you is because here we sort of have something to make up for. Um, this isn't connected. So with my ends here, I'm going to try and sort of sew this in into here and just sort of slightly 
connect these two things together. And then, of course, yeah, I mean, what is a bag without a tassel? So I will be making some tassels and adding those to it. I also have another idea for an embellishment for this bag, but that is for next week's video. So do look out for that one, uh, for that embellishment. And yeah, let's show off the bag. so much for watching this video i hope you find this a really nice project and i hope you will try it out thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video bye